We're going to be on Polar Night once again. It's going to be good fun. Indeed. And right now we're just waiting and I am actually run out of water for some games ago, but I forgot to get more. So now my throw is killing me, but that's wonderful because we have more StarCraft going and, you know, you can't give up StarCraft for just some drinks. So I just, we <laughs> I just guess we keep on casting and let's introduce the players spawning the top position on ESL Polar Night. It's going to be the one, the only, Grubby. And on the 6 o'clock position on Polar Knights, we have his opponent currently up 1-0 in this series. The winner of this would, will qualify for the WCS Challenger League. And uh, it is the blue turn from Team My Insanity. We have Jockji. So a question for you now. If Zombie Grub and Grubby got married and wanted to keep the, both the tags, would they be called Zombie Grubby then? No, I think it will be Zombie Grub Grubby. Oh, right. Or Grubby Zombie Grub. Grubby Zombie Grub. That's interesting. I actually right? like that. Grubby Zombie Grub. Grubby huh. Zombie Grub. Try saying that ten times fast. Oh, zombie God, grub. no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to happen. Anyhow, we're in one of the best games, I would say, for this uh, for this entire series. Or, no, not series, entire cast, I would say, almost. Because we have Grubby versus Jackchi. We have one of the most prominent... Um, Dutch uh, Dutch players, I want to say Netherlandish people, uh, but yeah, Dutch <laughs> players. and we also have Jaxi from Korea playing so well, and of course a previous GSL champion. And how many can say that nowadays? Not too many, I must say. Yeah, in particular because the GSL doesn't tend to do any GSL champions anymore. They just do WCS uh, Korea champions. So you know, that's that's one of those titles that uh, not a lot of people are going to be able to claim the fame just because it doesn't happen anymore. Very Change very the game, man. And by the way, uh, uh, for you guys who are wondering, Jaxi did beat Lenok for that title. So it wasn't just, you know, a random player or someone. No, he beat Lenok for that. So very, very cool. And of course, Grubby, not the worst of players himself. So it's going to be very interesting. Jaxi up one game and Grubby didn't seem too, um, too sad though. And uh, we'll see how well it does go for both players here. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, now we, we've seen Grubby being on fire earlier today. So... Uh... You know, he's, de he's definitely got it in him to uh, to make this a win. Oh, he was going to go for a little bit of a, a zealot pressure, as he does. But, uh, oh, okay, okay. It's just a tiny little economic rearrangement there. Still going for that zealot first. Most likely going to follow that up with the two stalkers and the mothership core, uh, as he likes to do on these uh, smaller, uh, in particular, like two-player maps. Yes, uh, he does really like that kind of pressure. The question though, how did Jackie respond to the last game? Because if he really just shut it down, he maybe not won't go for that kind of pressure again. And we do see a very early uh, Nexus going down here from Grubby. You know, kind of standard timing, so he won't be able to get that uh, Stalker way too early on. So he might just skip out on getting that very, very early aggression. Yeah, with the Reaper out here as well, that's going to be... Uh... Well, actually, he cancelled the Zealot to get the expansion out, so he doesn't have anything out on the field but the Mothership Core, who just popped. It's going to help and uh, try to defend these probes from the evil Marauding Reaper. Yes, and this Reaper can actually do some very, very nice scouting, and he might even snipe some probes. We'll see, though, how much damage he actually can do, because he only got one, so he doesn't have to do any damage. All he has to do is make sure he knows what's going on, and he knows that he can just safely go on with his build. Now, Grubby, though, he, he's just doing this kind of standardly. He's skipping out completely on that side, and will get the Stalker to make sure he doesn't take any damage, and also gain the map control against any Marines. Yeah, really nice uh, movements there by Grubby with the Mothership Core, sort of following Jockji's Reaper along, anticipating where it was possibly going to jump up, and denying it until the Stalker was here to uh, deal with it proper. So uh, that's a good control by him. Absolutely, and I also want to make sure, by the way, so everyone uh, do know as well, uh, that Chubbs and uh, the loser of the this series will still have a chance of qualifying because first off, there are more qualifiers as well as the the losers of the quarterfinals will play against each other for the last two seats. Oh, right. All right. Well, so it's it's not entirely over for uh, whoever loses in this Chubbs. position. Oh, and this one. Yes, sorry. Uh, filling in before, I do know what to fill in. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. But for, for Chubbs, it's also not over, which is great for him. We have uh, got a uh, hidden Grubby Stargate. Uh, funny enough, he uh, proxied it as though uh, he was going to attack his own natural. That is very, very true, and he just might, who knows? 
<laughs> right now, he, yeah, let's look at what he's getting. Okay, he's getting the Oracle. So this is the interesting kind of play we do see from a lot of players nowadays. Well, not too many, but we've seen it from Grubby a few times, and we've also seen it a few times more uh, in the go for this. Two people doing this kind of play where you get the Stargate uh, a bit later. You don't rush it, you don't go any kind of cheesy play with it. You just, you procs it close enough to your base that you won't lose it, and you can still use it, and that actually rhymed very nicely. And also, <laughs> of course, uh, then chronoing out the Oracle, because your opponent won't really have the turrets up, because there's nothing to suspect. Yeah, but Jockji seems to be expecting exactly what Grubby's doing. He's got a, uh, you know, eight marines in his main, he's got a number of them uh, in his natural, another eight marines, uh, ready to take out the Oracle. Now, if, you, if you'll note that you need, uh, I think it's at least four marines to uh, take out the Oracle. At all? I think an orca takes four marines, but can't take five. If ah, my okay. So this is, uh, it seems very deliberately prepared for exactly what uh, Grubby is doing. He gets a few kills, oh. but he's going to get warded off. Oh, there's the cancel on the missile turret. Jangji might have been expecting a DT play as well, but uh, this is actually some great control by Grubby. Still getting the kills, even though Jangji had his units in, uh, in place. Yeah, I must just give it to Jax as well. He was really splitting his uh, Marine stand, really making sure he can do as much damage as possible to that one Oracle. Now, Grubby did uh, lose a lot of health, but of course, as you said, he did kill four workers, which is always nice. And uh, now he's getting his Robo Bay, he's going to get his uh, Observers out to really make sure he sees everything. And we did see him last time get four Observers, so he might just spam out a few more here before he starts the Colossus production. Now, uh, the question is, when does Jack actually get aggressive? Because his Common Shield is quite late, his plus one is halfway done. Does he start without Common Shields and just start being very, very aggressive? Or do you think he might just add on the third base here? Um, yeah, I think he's going to be a little bit more defensive. Generally, when you want to be aggressive, then... Uh, well, actually... No, he has Stim, stim already. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess the, the Combat Shield is just sort of the eventual upgrade. Uh, you're gonna get if uh, anyway. Generally, you can sort of see that. Oh, I want to be aggressive really early. Then you'll get the combat shield before stim, uh, because it's so so much quicker. But because Jachi already went for the stim, uh, that's not really a read you can do anymore. And you always want the combat shield eventually. So, uh, but yeah, I think uh, Jachi is uh, clearly posturing across the map right now with his medevacs there. Uh, actually, they're kind of early compared to when yeah. you normally get them. It looks like he will try to hit a timing here with his combat shields, with his stim, and of course the plus one. And oh, nice drop here into the main base. We do know drops are kind of the weakness of Grubby right now, who has been having a lot of troubles with the drops uh, throughout the entire WCS. And here we go. Jackshi right now putting us the pressure and the forces are good actually. A nice pickup, but Jackshi saving his troops. And a nice hold by Grubby is making sure he doesn't lose anything almost. Very good hold so far, but forcing a lot of those force fields. And the Multi Core is actually not even produced yet. No, it's still on their way, so it's a, there's not going to be any photon overcharge uh, at all. And Jockji is just going to try and apply some direct pressure to the front, realizing that most of the army is uh, split up now. There's a first Colossus there, though, so I think that's going to shut down this push. There's the Phoenixes. They're going to be able to pick off the Metafax, and that's going to be a big problem there for Jockji, who did not anticipate this at all. No, and this is very, very nice by Grubby, picking off several of those uh, Marines as well. Sure, he does uh, waste his Graviton uh, Beam a bit, but he's killing off units, so it's absolutely fine. And now putting on the pressure on Jackson instead, and regaining that map control. Does lose one Phoenix, though. Does he lose the second one? Very nice micro from both the players. We'll save uh, the next one. And it's all these small things, you know. Instead of just stimming and A-moving, you do see some light splits coming out from Jackson all the time. All these small, small moves really showing the skill of both players. Yeah, this is uh, the, the highest of high levels. And yes. That, that's, it's, a, it's a beauty to behold. It's, uh, it's turning out to be quite a game. Neither player really giving much of an inch. Uh, both players have done uh, their fair share of trying to deal some damage. And it's, it's gone all right, but it hasn't panned out to be, you know, game-changing or game-defining just yet. And that's because, yeah. you know, their opponents have been dealing with it so well. Yeah, and this is a matchup you might just see in the WCS uh, in the WCS Global, um, not even, maybe the Grand Finals, but in the Finals where you have, you know, the Court Finals and everything in the group stages. This is absolutely something you could see and, uh, you know, it's such a high level game. We already see Jack actually scouting that uh, Stargate in the background. So he knows here I can now drop, I can, you know, shut that, that Stargate down, I can be annoying. And it's always good to have that, uh, that knowledge. Now, Grubby does scout Jaxi with a one observer, and Jaxi hasn't seen it yet, so hasn't scanned it away. Uh, so, Grubby does know exactly what kind of composition Jaxi is going, and also does know his opponent is still two bases, while he himself is being quite greedy and taking his third. 
Yeah, uh, but I think at this point, Robbie is in a good position to try and take a third. He's got the Mothership Core, of course, so that's going to help him a lot. He's got a, a nice Colossus count. He's got the Phoenixes in particular, which is going to, uh, you know, at the, at the very most, completely take out and at the very least, you know, it disincentivize. <gasps> oh! It, it wasn't me, but no, no. It's Juxi. No. no. That's unfortunate. That is very unfortunate because if he's still getting DDoS, that is so unfortunate. Oh, and mess. Oh, poor mess. <laughs> oh. So, anyhow, it looks. Oh! He's back! And, uh. Oh! Oh! Juxi pausing. Oh, that's. <laughs> BM. <laughs> yeah, Grumpy's like, no, keep playing, keep playing. <laughs> Grumpy's like, yes, you, I can do this now. Yes, no. Uh, <laughs> they were trying to pause at the same time, so um, that's unfortunate. I do hope the mess is still uh, set as a referee and not just a spectator, because in that case, he can do infinite amount of pauses. But uh, hopefully they can pause for some time. Now, Jackie was lagging a bit, so hopefully they can sort everything out. He'll make sure everything is fine. And meanwhile, let's just look over what is happening right now, because Jackie has been quite, not aggressive, I want to say posturing on the map, while Grubby, he postured a bit, but that was more, you know, like back off and then going back to his base. Absolutely. So I, I feel like Jackie wants to be the more aggressive player. Yeah, it definitely looks like... Uh, um... Like, like Jack G is in a position to do a lot of pressure. He's got a big Viking count. He's got a nice bio ball. And he's got his... Uh, uh, yeah, his 1-1 one -one is done. So, yeah, he's in a good position to put on some pressure. And then, you know, just sort of see how if he can trade away some of his army for the more costly army of Protoss. Uh, and, you know, sort of keep that up. He's uh, getting his own uh, third down, which is actually down and has been uh, revealed by uh, by Grubby's Oracle. Which is... Uh, I think it's it's gone by now, but... That's, you know, last value of the unit. Very, very true. And he does have a reveal on a few more units. So he does know what's incoming. And oh, those things has to watch out. Doesn't want to attack into too many Vikings. And he does see now there are a lot of Vikings. And that's actually nine Vikings out right now. Twelve, actually, on the entire map against only four Colossus. So those Colossi will die really quick unless uh, Grubby has some amazing control here. Yeah, of course. Whoa, that's uh, the Vikings gonna try, try to take out those Phoenixes, which are there to buffer wow. exactly for those Colossus. And now it's, it's gonna get, get a little bit troublesome for Grubby, but they're still equal on supply. This game, this engagement could go either way. Bless the focus fire on the Colossi. The, the stim is coming up, and the bio is attacking everything. The Colossus are doing some decent damage, but Jockey is currently microing back like an absolute boss, wow. and it's, it's making a lot of difficulties for Grubby. It's looking like uh, Jaxi might do this. Grubby holding strong though, trying to whoop in more. He might just do it. Using his Phoenix right now, has to pick up the last of those uh, Vikings as well as those Medivacs. Let's see. And it looks like Grubby is holding and Jaxi just wasted in his entire army. Grubby suddenly in a huge supply lead with more than 60 supply ahead. And he's just chasing Jaxi back with great pickups up, pick as well. And now going to put on some aggression towards this third base. He just got mules as well. Yeah, that's... Uh... It's 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 a rough spot to be Jockey right now. Grubby is going to uh, consolidate his forces, uh, trying to do another warp in, get everything in position. Uh, actually, he's just sort of getting upgrades and, and just posturing, but not really much else. He could be trying to, to go and deal the death blow, but he seems to be content just, you know, getting up the advantage for the next phase of the game. Well, he does know. I know he could be very aggressive, but maybe he doesn't want to be too aggressive because he does know he's way ahead in workers. He must know that because Jackie had way too much production for being greedy. So basically, he's ahead right now with 30 workers, and uh, you know, Grubby does have a seizable army and a sizable army rather, <laughs> not seizable army. And he's also getting two two. He's getting charged. Everything's going for him. There's, you know, there's no point in really attacking until he has all these wonderful things. Though we do have a big drop here by Jackie with two medivacs. The main attacks are going to be cleaned up. Those Marauders are doing quite some damage and might just snipe the main. Oh, but the, there's come the Phoenixes with the lifts and they're saving oh. the Nexus. Amazing play by Broby. Something we don't Oof. actually see a lot. How many times can you say that, oh yeah, the Nexus got saved by the Phoenixes as it tends to happen. Yes. That just doesn't <laughs> happen at all. And those Marauders were really nicely micro by Jack. You know, really making sure he doesn't lose anything. Oh, there we go. GG. He sees that Grubby has too much. Almost 100 more supply for Grubby. And it looks like we're going to go into the third game between these two players.